Uh, Dr. Gilanetta from the National Cancer Institute is here to talk about some of the opportunities at the National Cancer Institute at NIH in general um, for funding implementation research. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and turn it over to you. Great. And Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fernandez. And I am just going to um, pull up my slides. Uh, and hopefully people can see, I believe I have to put them in presentation mode. All right, can folks see my slides okay? And because I can no longer see people, um, can someone just let me know verbally whether you can see my slides? I'm gonna take that as a yes, the connection was not great. Um, Given that there may be some um, bandwidth issues, I'm gonna go, um, I wonder if I should go off video. I don't know if people can see me anyway. Um, maybe I'll keep myself, Maria. Okay. okay, okay, great. So um, I'm gonna try to keep this brief because I think these breakouts will be really valuable and probably much more valuable than going through all the details of the funding opportunities. But I do wanna just highlight some resources, um, training, funding, um, and other, uh, other, a couple other points just to motivate you to and to realize that um, there is funding to do this sort of work. And, um, and, and thank you, Dr. Fernandez and, and um, everyone for inviting me to, to talk about this. So uh, briefly just wanna mention we have a trans NIH. So the National Cancer Institute is one of the 27 institutes and centers at the National Institutes of Health in the United States. And we do have this trans NIH um, implementation science funding opportunities, um, as well as some National Cancer Institute NCI specific ones. Um, so these trans NIH um, funding opportunities in implementation science. They're called the Dissemination and Implementation Research and Health Funding Opportunities. Uh, you'll have these slides, so don't worry about the details, but I'm just showing you that there are, we fund through these mechanisms, both large R01, uh, large research projects, as well as small pilot research projects. And um, this is what, when you go to that website at the top here, this is what you'll see. Um, this is for the large research grant, uh, the R01, and you can see the institutes, the participating institutes and centers that participate. So if your research proposal, um, and, and we do um, grant, uh, we, these funding opportunities are available for researchers who are not based in the United States, as well as people in the United States. Um, and so these are the ones who participate in the large one. If you see, let's see, on the next slide at the bottom, you can see hyperlinks to the R21 and R03. Those are the small grant and pilot grants. Also this list of notices at the top here, you will, um, you will see that when, when there are related funding opportunities, they would be put here and listed here. Also, you'll see that these ones will be expiring in May, but they will be reissued and you'll see a notice um, posted here once that reissuance uh, will be live. Uh, so this is just to reiterate the purpose of these funding opportunities. Um, which has already been um, well articulated by Dr. Um, Fernandez and Powell and others. But essentially, this is the science to support or to study approaches to identifying, understanding, and developing strategies to overcome barriers to all the challenges we face when we're trying to implement um, evidence, evidence-based interventions, tools, policies, et cetera. Uh, these funding opportunities also highlight the importance of understanding circumstances where we may need to stop using something that's ineffective, unproven, low value, or harmful. Um, and to the question that one person asked about whether these, whether um, developing or studying a framework might be relevant, yes, studies to advance our understanding of methods and measures are also encouraged. Um, 
I'll encourage you to take a look at the funding opportunities um, when you have time, because there are a list of questions um, in those opportunities. But just to reiterate these, uh, some examples of research questions can be focused on understanding the best ways to adapt an intervention, understanding which strategies best support uptake or sustainability, um, scale up, and again, that de-implementation. So one other resource, and this is a very, um, I've found investigators have found this very useful, is several investigators have agreed to um, post their full application. So these are people who have successfully been awarded grants through these funding opportunities. Their full research strategy is available for you to review. And um, two examples are in LMICs, one in Vietnam, one in India. Um, and this is just a helpful resource, I think, to, when you're thinking about how you might frame your research questions, your specific aims, um, and your research study as a whole, and, and seeing examples of how some of these studies have been conducted and the methods that have been used. Um, so just wanted to highlight that the National Cancer Institute does see implementation science as a key priority area. Um, and we expect that opportunities will continue to grow. Um, the National Cancer Institute also has a Center for Global Health within the Institute, which also has identified implementation science as a key priority area. Two examples of funding opportunities that the Center for Global Health has recently issued. One is a notice of special interest that is connected to those trans NIH funding opportunities. Um, and the, the notice of special interest is that they're interested specifically in implementation science for cancer prevention and control in low resource environments. Um, additionally, and most recently, the Center for Global Health issued uh, a funding opportunity for implementation science for cancer control in populations living with HIV in low and middle income countries. If you have any questions about either of those, please feel free to email me. Um, if you are interested in other funding opportunities at NCI, I'm only showing you this, not because I want you to be able to read all these opportunities, but to see we have a search engine. And on the left-hand side, you can actually search by implementation science. Um, and so this is within our division of cancer control and population sciences, which whose portfolio is primarily domestic, but there are also opportunities open to international investigators. Finally, um, I wanted to mention that we have a training institute in implementation science. And while this one is called Training Institute in Implementation Science in Cancer, it's actually um, quite broad and based on a general uh, training in implementation science for all health areas. And you can see the modules here and actually Dr. Fernandez and Dr. Powell, um, I believe if not currently in these modules, certainly in the past have provide, have given lectures in this training. Um, and so here you have all of these uh, lecture materials, readings available to you open access. And I believe there's a link at the top here. Um, and then I think the consortium, um, I'm gonna just breeze through this, but we have recently launched in the past couple of years, the consortium. Um, and really I'm mentioning this as an opportunity to network and identify investigators that may have over, overlapping interests with your work, but it's also a group of implementation scientists who have identified key areas um, that the field seeks to advance. And so if, you're studying a topic that may overlap with some of those topics. This might be a good venue um, for you to identify other folks with similar interests with whom you might collaborate um, or see it as an opportunity potentially to help advance the field um, and advance your work. So lastly, when you do get to the point of um, exploring these funding opportunities, here's just some general tips that we offer investigators um, and essentially uh, focusing on that all caps, the program officers, um, and I am one of them, we are here to help. So do feel free to reach out to us as you're conceptualizing your study. Um, if you have questions about scientific review, Wenjuan Wang is our um, scientific review officer at our Center for Scientific Review. Um, and they are the ones who review these applications. 
but the program officers are here to help you conceptualize and develop your applications and respond to reviewer comments once you've gotten to that stage. Um, and as I had mentioned before, there are several, many institute centers and offices who participate in these funding opportunities. Um, and you can see the list of program officers at the bottom of those funding opportunities. Um, so thank you for your time and attention. And hopefully, um, you know, these resources will be made available to you. I'm happy to answer questions uh, in the few minutes we have. But um, given that, unfortunately, I have to uh, log off of the workshop in, um, in 20 minutes for uh, another meeting, which I unfortunately was not able to change. I wanted to be able to participate in those breakouts. So I'm keeping my talk short, if that's okay. And I'm trying to figure out how do I stop sharing? Stop sharing, there we go. Hopefully that was useful. I see there's a bunch of questions in the chat, Maria. So maybe I should skim through those. Um, yeah. Oh, great. And people saying, yes, they can see my slides. Thank you. Like, um, would you like us to read those off to you? Um, so I actually see the first question I see is from Hisham Musan. And apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, would it be enough just to have a research question alone to choose an appropriate framework? Or would the aspect of implementation that are being looked into and other similar aspects of the proposed study also matter in choosing the framework? Um, oh, and I see Maria, thank you. You answered that question. <laughs> so yeah, Maria, maybe I should ask you to um, tell me what questions do I need to answer? <laughs> So one of the, uh, somebody put grant writing is, I actually had a question for you just to, for clarification and then um, we could go to this other one up. They, so there are a number of opportunities that you highlighted and I know that many of them are only open to people from the US, but they could be, um, and then there's others that are open to people from other countries as principal investigators. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so the ones that I showed, um, so those dissemination and implementation research and health, those ones are open to investigators in any country. Um, and so um, to the question from Umesh Aryal uh, is, um, I think that grant writing is challenging, um, not only for people in low and middle income countries actually, um, but I think for, um, for many people all over the world, and I think that one piece of advice we give to early stage investigators or investigators who are new to writing grants for NIH is to um, partner or um, consult with an investigator, a more senior investigator or somebody who has been successfully funded um, because I think they can help. But Maria, as an investigator, I, I imagine you might have um, perhaps more practical advice. Yeah, I, I think that um, particularly those of you who are new to implementation research, and even though those of you who have been doing implementation research in your own countries, it is definitely challenging to um, write a, a grant um, for NIH um, and be competitive. And, um, and fortunately, th those of you who are, be, are involved in the NORAD um, work are going to have an opportunity to, to um, be writing a, a research, implementation research proposal for your own country that would be funded through those funds. But one of the things that you might want to consider is how you might um, also adapt that or um, develop another research study that is related to that, that could be submitted to NIH. And I think that I would give the same advice um, as Dr. Netta, which is if it's really useful to partner with somebody who has already done that type of work. We covered a little bit yesterday about some of the key ingredients in, that go into a proposal, but obviously that's just, um, you know, the surface and there's much more that goes into it. But I think that a couple things, looking at those examples that Dr. Netta provided, um, 
partnering with someone who has that experience and um, and putting together a multidisciplinary team, I think is really important. How much time NIH take to provide funding after submission of a proposal? <laughs> okay, that's, that's uh, another uh, question that came up. Um, I think it's about, is it about a year, uh, Dr. Netta, between I, the time? I, I think that is about right, between the time that the application well, I guess it depends between the time the application is reviewed and gets a fundable score um, to the time that the monies are, um, are awarded. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Dr. Fernandez, if we should move to the breakouts and I would be very happy, I will put my email again in the chat and very happy to just um, respond to follow-up questions by email, and that way you can go straight to the breakouts if that works. I can just keep monitoring the chat a little bit. Thank you again for, um, for your presentation and responding to questions. Um,